Hi, like many other peripherals, most people have a preferred mouse shape. My favorite is the M60 series from Corsair, and one of mine was showing signs of switch degradation. The most common symptoms of switches starting to degrade are bouncing, where the mouse registers multiple clicks when you only click once, and buttons that require a lot of pressure to register a click. These gaming mice are actually really good for all purposes, including work. They are very robust and have the best sensors available. They are also rather expensive, and it will be a waste to buy a new one just because the switch is failing. Another reason for someone to want to replace their switches is to customize the required force for a switch to activate. This is my Corsair M60. The right click button and the navigation buttons require more force than usual to operate, so I'm going to replace the old switches with new ones. I'll also use this chance to customize the buttons. Most people like switches with a very strong feedback, avoiding accidental actuations. However, I prefer a more soft, silent actuation, so I'll replace the originals with switches that require less force to register a click. I'll start by taking the mouse apart. In case of doubt about your specific model, search on the internet and you will probably find instructions on some forum or video. If your mouse has buttons or lights on top, take it apart carefully. It might have fragile ribbon cables connecting the two halves, like this one. The most common brand of switches used in quality mice is Omron, a Japanese manufacturer with a very good reputation, used in the left and right side of this mouse. On the side buttons, Corsair used some cheap switches, which explains why they fail with so few actuations. They usually have three pins and only use two of them. Among all the micro switch brands and models, this is the most common package. As you can see, the side switches have the same size and footprint of the Omron ones. If you want to try and extend the life of your current switches instead of replacing them, you can try and spray them with contact cleaner. It usually works, but only for a limited time. The best option is to replace them. I wanted switches that require less force to actuate, so I went with these from CNK, which are also a very good manufacturer of electromechanical components. As you can see, they have the exact same size as the original ones. The best way to unsolder these switches is to use a heated solder sucker. You can use a cheap one, I will link some affordable options in the video description. After sucking the solder, the switch comes out easily. Remember to solder the new switch pointing in the right direction. To solder the new switch, I usually apply a bit of flux in the terminals and then I just apply a bit of solder. As you can see, with the flux, the solder flows very easily. In most cases, you don't need to trim the pins of the switch, but it looks cleaner and more professional. It's also a good idea to use some solvent to clean the flux, but avoid getting fluids inside the new switches. I find that the solvent used in contact cleaners is actually really effective at cleaning flux residue.
Now I just need to do the same to the other two buttons. I'll take the main board out and replace both left and right switches. Now that all switches were replaced, I'm going to put everything back together. If you like soft, silent clicks, I really recommend this switch by CNK. On top of that, they are really cheap, they cost around 50 cents each. I'll link in the description the tools and parts I've used.